So it is a privilege to be able to inter sit down and interview with you, uh, Shiv and, and Mike, uh, and get sort of a, a little bit of an update slash kind of a overview as to what you guys have been working on um, with Perseverance. Um, so in a nutshell, can you guys describe a little bit more about the technology contributions that both of your groups are contributing to the Perseverance mission? Yeah, I think uh, when Mike was at uh, Livermore Laboratory, he used a, uh, a small telescope and the lasers uh, to measure the Raman spectrum. Uh, usually people do micro Raman, and so that was the starting thing. And then in uh, 1996, uh, Paul Lucy, who is a planetary scientist, came to my lab and he said, can you detect a mineral at a distance? And I told him that, well, uh, I cannot because uh, I only use micro Raman. And I said, I don't have a telescope. So he ran to his office, got a telescope, and we set it up. <laughs> and so, and then he said, oh, let's write a proposal to NASA. And so we wrote a proposal and uh, it was funded. And uh, so we, then presented a paper on the technique uh, in 1998. Am I right, Mike? <laughs> um, if you're talking about the uh, Pulse Raman, it was 1998, that's correct. Yeah. And the, uh, the the Raman system that uh, I was doing at Livermore that Shiv described was in 1992. And, and actually the system that's on Perseverance right now, it's. Of course, it's more than just Raman. There's other instruments as part of SuperCam, and Shiv can tell you more about that. But there's a remote Raman system and a remote Lib system, and the remote Raman system is really pretty much designed exactly the way Shiv and I did it back in the day, uh, the first paper in '92, and then later in 1998. And uh, so now it's on Mars, <laughs> something very, very similar. Uh, one of five instruments. There's four other instruments on Super on SuperCam, mm -hmm. and Shiv and I are, are on the science team for SuperCam specifically. Although we work on other aspects of the mission and uh, uh, other parts of the project, but Shiv can probably tell you more about the other instruments. He knows better than I do those instruments. Gotcha. Yeah. So in, in short, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So far, it's not broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of, I mean, especially that, that's really kind of an interesting consideration that the design is actually quite old, relatively speaking. You know, it, it's not something necessarily brand new, but you guys have tried it and it, it definitely has proved itself over time. Yeah, well, there's two There's two major things that, that Shiv and I did. And one was when the CCDs became available back in the, um, uh, in the uh, early 90s, and, and diode lasers showing that we could do remote Raman at all. And then Shiv came in and showed that you could use a pulsed laser. And that changed everything. Because then you can do it in the daylight. And then Shiv, of course, is the world's expert on this. He's uh, um, So he's basically responsible for getting this onto the rover. Yeah, and also it went through a really development in terms of uh, uh, minimizing the size and all that and uh, uh, we further improved it and so we use a directly coupled system rather than fiber optics coupled system but uh, then the rest of the work was done at uh, uh, for the March 2020 was done at, uh, uh, at Los Alamos National Laboratory and so um, here it is. We had a lot of constraints in terms of putting the uh, instrument on the on the rover. So, right. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the remote lib system is basically the same design as a remote Raman. They're really the same thing. It's just a matter of focusing the laser or not focusing the laser. Yeah, I think for lib system too, because before they were doing CW detection, so uh, Sam Clegg came, he wanted to write a proposal for Venus exploration. And so he came to the lab and we set it up and with the the, the signal is really weak because the pressure on Venus is very high. So we use a, a time-gated uh, intensified detection system and that gave a good result. So um, yeah, so a lot of things went uh, in the lab. It's a collaboration going on. So, um, and Mike came in 2002 and he had a, uh, we measured the Raman spectrum to 60 meters 
and is published in the Applied Spectroscopy. Am I right, Mike? Yeah, there were quite a few papers <laughs> at that time. I think that's the right date, yes. Yeah. That's an important paper. That was the first pulsed, in, in a journal, that was the first pulsed remote Raman system. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was a very important date.